702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour coming to you live from the WWDBTV.com studios in Las Vegas. Welcome to the show this week. Boy, here we are, hot and heavy in the election season. I'm here with my host, Perry Haichu, and uh, we're just uh, going to cover some of uh, what we see happening out here and uh, uh, starting off uh, in Nevada. Uh, before we get to the election, we'd like to just say that for those of you who didn't get to the weekend party last week, you missed a great party. We did have a great time. Good turnout, nice mellow crowd, a lot of vendors represented. Um, uh, good weather. I don't yeah. really know what else to say. It was it was wonderful, wonderful vibes. It was uh, it was a fun party. It was um, uh, as Perry said, very mellow. Uh, you you don't have any of the aggression that you do at a, at a normal uh, alcohol type of party, and and uh, it was just it was a perfect evening for it. Uh, so these weekend events are meant to uh, to raise funds to help get uh, indigent people on the program, uh, and so they're they're good events. You can feel good about going to them and you're gonna have a great time at them uh, so by all means um, if you uh, haven't been to this one uh, get to some of our upcoming events uh, you can get to them at our uh, Facebook page the weekend 702 uh, and uh, they're just they're worth your time to go and support the community and meet people uh, it, it was great I, I ran into people who I hadn't seen uh, for several years there and uh, just out of the blue patients that I'd worked with formerly and it's just uh, um, you know it, it, it's like coming home for Thanksgiving right? <laughs> you see people who are family yeah and it's always a reunion at those parties no doubt absolutely and and I saw you came in as the Mad Hatter uh, Willy Wonka Willy Wonka oh, I try right. I tried to uh, that's, that's what everyone thought I was, but uh, Gene Wilder died, so I wanted to try to yeah. try to pay tribute and all that. Yep. But, and, and you brought with you Roger Rabbit and Jessica Rabbit. Uh, yeah, quite a team there. <laughs> Indeed. So <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so it, it, everybody had a good time at this. Uh, I, I didn't hear one crossword about it, and uh, it was just a spectacular location. So uh, once again, uh, come on out, support these weekend events because they are um, uh, they're really helping us to help other people. So getting getting into the news more a little bit, um, we have uh, coming from the Yes on Two campaign that ten labor unions in Nevada have endorsed Question Two. Now I know you're not a big fan of labor union. Oh, that's not necessarily general. true. I was a former employee of a labor union. My father was an employee of a labor union for the last 35 or so years in the in the uh, operating engineers. I was a IOTC local mm -hmm. 720 rigger for seven years proudly uh, well, I have no you know, no problems with IOTC people organizing IOTC is actually uh, one of the uh, the unions that has come out endorsing this and I noticed that I was proud to see it who don't know that that IOTC is the International Alliance of theatrical stage employees and local 720 mm -hmm. uh, also the culinary union uh, which is one of the largest, largest unions yeah. in, in uh, Las Vegas in Nevada all the big uh, ones but all three teams all three teamsters unions the International Brotherhood of Electro Corps Workers, local 396. Now, I find them to be interesting because in um, in 2010, when the federal raids had happened and we were in the midterm elections, and um, uh, you had a, a lot of uh, partisan fervor out there because the uh, the Republicans were trying to make gains. Uh, because they didn't like the fact that Obama was in the White House. And oh, sure. 2010 was up, uh, actually when the Tea Party made its big entry into mm -hmm. American politics. But I was I was at a, a, a political meeting, and I had a fellow come up to me from the International Brotherhood of Electric Workers, and he said, you're trying to sabotage the party. You're pushing this pot agenda, and you're trying to make everybody vote, you know, for the other side. And, and I'm like, wow, that is just insane. Uh, and... Uh, you know, but that that's the kind of uh, prejudice and, and ignorance that, that we've been fighting in this community for, for decades. And, uh, you know, it's here it is, though, six years later, and now uh, they've come out in full support of legalizing. Well, once again, I'm happy to hear it, and I would hope that maybe they would be able to find some work through some of these uh, some of these larger larger uh, facilities that may come with recreational dependent upon Absolutely. you know their expertise and things like that they're the best so and their their next task will be uh, once legalization does pass is to uh, is to craft out protections for their members uh, so that if somebody is doing something in their own time in their own home that they're not going to be fired at work three days later for right it. so other unions uh, other uh, 
unions that have uh, endorsed this are the uh, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 14, Teamsters Local 631, Teamsters Local 986. Wow, there's a bunch also, of teamsters yeah. out there. Uh, the International Union of Operating Engineers, mm -hmm. Local 12. The Laborers Union, Local 872. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the UA Local 525 of the Plumbers, Pipe Fitters, and Service Technicians. And, uh, of course, our friends at the United Food and Commercial Workers International Union. And that's not a big surprise because they've, they've been running, helping to run initiatives uh, in other states. They have, they've organized locals in several states. I've noticed that. Are they the only national union so far to come out and support fully? Because, you know, uh, Culinary 226, they're huge and all this. Is this yeah, all these others are local. Okay. Uh, UFCW is a, a national union, and, and they have their Cannabis Rising division, uh, and so they do support... Uh, pot initiatives around the country. Uh, it's good to see them come out here uh, and, and uh, support along with these local Absolutely. Uh, it is. They're it, great at turning out votes, too. They have a good... Uh, they have a good, good machine. Yeah, yes, they, they, they do. They absolutely do. So, um, you know, Senator Aaron Ford, state senator, said these endorsements underscore one of the key benefits of regulating marijuana. He says that the, the passage of question two will take the production and sale out of the underground market and create thousands of good-paying jobs for Nevadans, it will be a tremendous benefit to our state to eliminate a significant portion of the criminal drug trade while providing significant tax revenue to our state. For me, this is Aaron Ford speaking, uh, for revenue and for public safety, I am proudly supporting question two. Uh, and we're getting we're getting here from our in-studio producer that uh, the unions are for two because they get drug tested and can't get enough people to pass. Well, actually, it's not only it's not only the unions, but the FBI itself has had to uh, relax their policies. Relax their I guess. Policy. Because if formerly any prior drug use at all was a disqualifier for oh, yeah, immediately. FBI employment, but now the FBI says, "Have you used, you know, for cannabis? Have you used in the past five years?" Right. And so uh, youthful indiscretions are well, no longer. It's like the guy said: there, it's becoming harder and harder to recruit quality youth candidates in these certain specific fields that they want to recruit in mm -hmm. domestically. Because you know, you can't just up and decide to be a, an FBI. You know, computer analyst, and go do that. No, you have to be very. Doing, you got to be pretty stringently yeah. background checked. You have you're, to go through the motions. That, so yeah, um, I'm hoping that we can start to break that cycle. I'm really like, I called uh, the IATSE union after I heard that go down, mm -hmm. and I said, "Well, does this mean that you're going to stop drug testing your employees?" Like I had to go through since you're such in in demand, and they're just like, "Look, you know, basically what they told me is baby steps. We're not there yet, but." You know, it's not really an end game, but they, they weren't really very forthcoming on what their end plan was. But from what I gather, it seemed to be that that's kind of well, the end road. It, it's understandable to some degree. I mean, they, uh, question two is not going to uh, mandate that employers allow uh, workers who are using cannabis. Uh, no, but you know, that, they, we're always looking to change that. laws that need to be changed. And as I look down the road, I really see this as... More, even more of an issue than simple possession at this point is people's ability to make a living without being under duress constantly. The, the, the big problem here is that, you know, like alcohol, um, you know, you're, you, if you use cannabis, you're, you, the effect lasts for a while. And so with, with, the, with the stage workers, you don't want these guys to be hanging big lights and have, a, have something drop. You don't want of the course not. driving trucks and having an accident when they've got active metabolites in their system. So to some degree, I think it's the, the unions that are, uh, not the unions, but the insurance companies that are uh, pushing liability sure. issues here. Sure, sure. So, but uh, on, on this with question two here in Nevada, uh, we have a, a recent recent uh, telephone poll that, uh, that I just got a hold of yesterday, and it's a private poll, so I'm not allowed to give the source, and, you know, but it's not one of these internet polls. They actually they were calling up people who did vote, and the, the question that they asked was, did you vote for question two? And the raw numbers that they have out of uh, 1,500 responses right now are 52.94% yes and 4706 
against. So that's roughly 53 to 47, a six point lead for question two at this point, a week out from the election and uh, a week into uh, early voting. The sample size over the past nine days of early voting is 1,545. Okay. And uh, they, they currently have 54 to 46 advantage in Clark County uh, and 51 to 49 advantage uh, in Washoe County. Uh, the question two initiative uh, is losing the rurals uh, 62 to 38. Oh, but man. Now, that, that's a big loss. But if you look at some of the rural counties who, who only have 1,300, no. 2,000 people in Look, the, I, I you know. hear you, but... Um, Okay, so we might win the state. That's great. But a lot, we're going to run into the same problem that we still have, like what Mr. Bresney was saying a few weeks ago. All these local municipalities and communities can opt out of these recreational dispensaries, they and they most likely will, which will which continue is, which to is provide. Okay because they're still not, they're still not going to be able to opt out of not charging people. Oh, that of course, of course. But uh, there was a, uh, a patients group up in Elko. Mm -hmm. I I, uh, I kind of follow. I forget I forget the name, but uh, they don't have a dispensary up there. Their population base allows them to have one, mm -hmm. but they don't want one. So they're kind of really hoping that question two passes. So maybe they can sure. at least have some local access to well, go instead. The, you know, the good thing is our our best numbers. Uh, for passage 54 to 46 in Clark County. Yeah, that's where and we Clark need to County win. Clark County has more than two thirds of the oh, state of population. So if we carry Clark and we carry Washoe, uh, it doesn't really matter what goes mm -hmm. on in the uh, in the rurals. So you know, sorry guys. Uh, you know, uh, also we're um, uh, we're winning uh, with men 53.5 to 46.5, uh, slightly less with women 52 to 48 mm -hmm. as general demographics. Uh, we lose with people over. 55 years old uh, and we lose it uh, 48 yes 52 no uh, but with people under 55 we're winning 57 to 43 now as long as we can get the Millennials out to vote and even the Gen Xers out to vote um, this initiative will pass if we rely on the strength of the baby boomers however I think that um, you're gonna see this this fail because apparently a lot of them are voting against it mm -hmm. I, I guess they slept through the 60s yeah that's uh, that's very interesting as as we so commonly point out in legislature the most uh, the largest base of medical marijuana patients in the state are in that demographic that we just spoke of that are kinda coming against coming out against uh, the initiative, I mm -hmm. guess, or at least in the polling. So, you well, know, that's, that's kind of... They've also been used to a lifetime of propaganda. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's just... Well, I even hear it a lot. They're, uh, people are people are listening to these no on two questions. You know, they're like, oh, you know, the kids and the candy and, you know, kids are dying and things like that. And I'm like, you cannot really be serious that you're believing that, but they are. And, they're and really kind of just falling for the same old... Uh, and the same old song and dance, I guess. As we spoke about several weeks ago, the um, the no on two forces or the 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 prohibitionist forces around the country in these initiatives are, are telling half truths. They're telling flat out lies. And as a matter of fact, uh, three uh, Colorado uh, state legislature uh, states legislature. Tours, um, recently drafted a letter to the uh, the Arizona No campaign, uh, saying that they requesting that they take their commercials off the air because they're lying about what's going on in Colorado and saying that. how the Colorado program is a failure and kids are dying and this and that and, and everything. And these Colorado Colorado legis legislators uh, are saying that it's just not accurate, not true, and it, it's painting a wrong impression of the state, which has had very few problems since uh, since the passage well, we're uh, go right ahead well, we'll the think. last thing I was gonna say about Colorado is I see people commenting on the yes on two page or the regulate marijuana like alcohol in Nevada page and they'll say well I'm from Denver and the prices of real estate have gotten outrageous and it's just so hard to find a place to live now in downtown Denver and I've heard that from more than one person my aunt lives in downtown Denver and told me how expensive her damn rent has gotten and I'm thinking to myself shit I'm a homeowner that's good for me yes you know what I mean I don't really know like if you're renting I guess that's bad, but for me, I'm excited about the prospect of having more people move to if town and having that go up. go up. That is generally considered to be a good thing. I, I would think so. For me, at least, and I'm Denver excited. Denver had biggest tourist revenues last year. You know, yeah. a, a year after uh, their legalization, mm -hmm. or two years after their legalization kicked into gear. All right, we're going to take a quick break here on WWDBTV.com and be right back. Stay 
Nevada Pure is a premier vertically integrated medical marijuana enterprise which offers top quality medical marijuana, great customer service, in a safe private environment. We carry a wide selection of medical cannabis strains. Our knowledgeable staff will insist you in finding the correct strain for your condition. Our trained professional staff can educate you on various strains for your condition, methods of consumption, responsible cannabis use, and the wellness benefits of cannabis. We aim to help patients achieve a better quality of life. Medical marijuana is a medicine, not an intoxicant. It's about a patient's well-being at Nevada Pure. From the moment you make an appointment with us, your care, health, and well-being is our priority. Nevada Pure is located at 4360 Boulder Highway, Las Vegas, Nevada. Check out their entire menu at www.nevadapure.com. Hi, I'm Armin Yemenijan, CEO of Essence Dispensaries, and I'd like to let you know a little bit about our company. As a completely complimentary service, our on-site nurse is here to meet with any patient or non-patient to discuss dosing and best practices. We have three convenient locations. We have one location on Tropicana between Decatur and Jones, which is our west side location. Our Henderson location is on the corner of Sunset and Green Valley Parkway, and we're proud to announce that we have the first and only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Our prices are the low prices in town and the highest quality medicine. Please come and see us at one of our three convenient locations or visit us at EssenceVegas.com. You can also call us at 702-978-7575. Once again, the number is 702-978-7575. Getting Legal offers an informative and simple way for you to get your marijuana card. Why come to Getting Legal to get your marijuana card? We have a 99% approval rating and the lowest price in town. Avoid legal problems. Getting Legal can get you legal fast. Ready for a new start? Come in now and get relief from your chronic conditions affecting your quality of life. Call Getting Legal today at 702-979-9999. That's 702-979-9999. Or visit our website at gettinglegal.com to get your marijuana card today. And welcome back to the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour. We're talking about uh, what's going on uh, for the next few days in in the election here in Nevada, but there's also a lot more news uh, around the country. Uh, And uh, I saw a story um, from a couple of days ago from uh, Stanley Stanley Derrick over at Hemp News uh, that in California, uh, marijuana is now being smuggled. Oh, my God. What a crazy thing. But the normal flow uh, for, for illicit substances in this country is to come from the south and the west and move to the north and the east. According to a report by KPBS.org, uh, they suggest that there's unexpected development in this story because uh, they're saying that there is a demand now in Mexico for potent California strains of marijuana. It was only a matter of time before this started happening to where the market dried up here in uh, the states for the lesser quality product and the demand Mm -hmm. over there you know you can only hear about something that's so good for so long before you want to try it yourself considering it just happens to be just right there just across the border there and and not only just across the border but throughout mexico uh and so what they're saying is that although it's equally as unlawful to smuggle contraband from mexico into the u.s or from the u.s into mexico the process of entering mexico is a lot easier due to the lack of attention paid to the reversed ideology right right. (laughs) Right? a smuggler can cross the border into tijuana without ever speaking to an official making the process nearly risk free mm-hmm. I mean you know if you're if you're gonna be carrying a bale of pot on your back I think you, you want to yeah wrap but if you, it can, up you really can bring well a little I mean but. I could bring enough in a large coat or if I was a large guy and yeah. had a bunch strapped to me I could take a cup maybe a pound with me or something oh, like that easily yeah 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 and so uh, it, it's interesting to see that um, you know this is another failure of prohibition where people want something they will find a way to get it and if they can't get it legally and they can't get it through government licensed facilities they're going to turn to alternative sources and you know the black market and so uh there's no there's no mention in this uh in this article as to the source of this california pot whether it's coming from uh whether it's americans exporting uh well, business product or whether it's the narco traficantes who have come from south of the border who are growing it here and then returning it that to would south be my border. immediate idea just because i mean yeah and they're already doing it you know Mm -hmm. it's been documented that they have these big grows in these national forest areas or wherever up in the hills why wouldn't they just kind of use like you said use those networks they already have to just bring it right back down there's no like you said there's hardly any risk yeah 
It, it really isn't. And so, the thing that jumped out at me at this article was this right here. Mm -hmm. Marijuana in Mexico averages a level of 2% THC, pot psychoactive ingredient. Marijuana grown in California, on the other hand, can reach a THC concentration level of 30% or sometimes higher. Well, of mm -hmm. course, <laughs> that tell, that's the whole story right there. But once again, this is the this is the economics and the development of prohibition. And you can look at this story uh, going back decades and decades. Uh, back in the 50s, nobody, uh, nobody in this country except jazz musicians, blacks and Latinos uh, smoked pot apparently. And you know, then Jack Kerouac came along, right? But nobody was doing coke, nobody was doing the, the, the ecstasy, LSD was only being used by the army for right. experiments. But uh, you know, there, there was low, low grade pot being brought into the country. And you know, that was such a horrible thing that in the 60s, then the early 70s, 